let's hear it now um, from John's Gospel. Listen for God's word to you. The words of Jesus. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Let me repeat that. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. The Word of God. Let's pray together. Lord, we give you thanks for these words of Christ, words that are so simple and yet so profound. And help us, Lord, as we reflect on them together to open our hearts to your Holy Spirit's voice, that we would come away rejoicing uh, knowing the joy that Christ speaks of that would be full in us. Help us to abide as he is indicating and, and guiding us. Help us to be faithful. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there's a couple of ways to read that text. Um, there's a tendency, I think, for a lot of folks to read it on a on a way that we really shouldn't, and that is to read it in a pretty negative way. We focus on the idea of gathering, pruning, gathering those pruned limbs, throwing them into the fire, and we think, oh no. It's one of those heavy texts about judgment or something. But did you notice that's, that's not where Jesus is leading the text. Uh, he's leading it to joy. He's leading it to uh, a deep abiding love that God has for us and, and that we can share and participate in and know God's love and presence in our own lives. It's, it's really a text about where the source of our life and love is and how we can maintain that in, in God's presence in, in our own lives. That God is, uh, in Jesus, is our source of life and love. <coughs> It's really meant to be an encouragement. I just want to point out that negative reading and let you say, wait a minute, maybe I ought to reevaluate that if that's what jumped out at you. Maybe that's not the way to read the text. I, I find it fascinating how Jesus uses so many simple metaphors. Remember last week we talked a lot about metaphor. And here we are with another metaphor. I am the vine and you are the branches. Wonderful metaphor. It's a wonderful image. Jesus is the vine, and you are connected. You are in Christ. You are a part of the very life of Christ. You are connected to the vine. Can you uh, advance that one slide? <laughs> You all know that image, right? You know the saying, cut the limb you're sitting on. Right? A bad idea. Bad idea. But uh, that's, 
that's something that we might be able to choose to do, to cut ourselves off, but, but Jesus is the life, the love that flows into our lives. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. He uses this metaphor, and it's a beautiful metaphor. It's, it's meant to be an encouragement. You are not an individual all to yourself trying to make things work out. You are part of the very life of Christ. Christ is in you. You're not uh, trying to grit your teeth and work your way into salvation or into God's presence. You are already connected. You belong to the vine. You belong to this organic living reality of God's life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Jesus is the light and life in John's gospel, the opening chapter. Jesus is uh, the life that is the light of the world. Jesus' life is flowing into you. We are organically connected. Paul uses that metaphor too and, and says that, that we are a a living body, that we are in this kind of, uh, we, we are the body of Christ, that uh, Christ's life is flowing through us as the people who form this church, the global church. What are we going to say to the toe if it's having a toe ache? Get lost? No. Uh, every, everyone belongs. Everyone uh, is an important member, Paul is saying. Everyone has their own gifts, Paul is making the point. But we all belong and we are connected and we receive our life, not from ourselves. We are not self-made. Maybe we can say we can self-destruct. We can cut ourselves off if we want to, but why would you do that? That's the point. Why would you do that? <laughs> We wouldn't, we wouldn't do that either, right? And, and Jesus' point is saying, it's, that's, that's your decision, I guess. But it's a metaphor that was so familiar. I mean, all the metaphors and, and images and ways that Jesus taught were simple, agricultural. Just think of all the ways. He wasn't speaking in lofty philosophical language to Express. He speaks more profoundly than anyone I know in history. Right? And yet he does it with mustard seeds. He does it with vines and branches. He does it with birds and nests and bread and wine and shepherd and sheep. And all of these, these metaphors that are down to earth and right normal parts of everybody's lived experience. And Jesus takes them up. And so you can imagine that everybody in that, uh, that time, they, they were familiar with vines and branches and vineyards, and, and they understood how those things were cared for and nurtured, and that, that pruning was actually a healthy thing for the vine. Pruning was important. It's a critical important. I, I've seen vineyards. Uh, and I know that you've got to prune them in order to produce better fruit. Uh, once you let it go wild, uh, it's not going to be so great for, for your winemaking. It's, uh, it's a matter of what's healthy for the vine that Jesus is talking about. What's healthy for the whole body. What's healthy for the community of life. And... It's going to make that vine stronger, and it's going to make the whole, the whole organic reality stronger and more vibration. Uh, but Jesus, we remember, is the source of life. And what he is offering to us is this, this good news that in him we will have connection. And if we remain in him, abide in him, which isn't really difficult for us. It sounds like maybe that's another negative way of reading it. Maybe you think, oh, to abide in Christ, that must be hard work. Is it hard work for the branches to stay? No. Jesus invites us to, 
to let his life flow into our lives, to just, just cooperate, just participate, right? just belong, and, and watch God's spirit at work, making this a healthy, organic reality. Already you are clean. You see where you begin? I wanted to repeat that verse because that verse gets to uh, setting this metaphor on that positive. Don't think I'm just trying to twist it into the most positive way possible. Jesus is setting it up as the most positive message. If you really hear that verse, already you are clean. Already. Because of the word that he has spoken to us. His word is, is that we are loved, that we are forgiven, that we are the children of God. And so abide there. Don't run away. Don't cut yourself off. C.S. Lewis is a famous and most wonderful, I think, um, book, The Great Divorce, is all about the, the choice that some people make to cut themselves off from God. And, and to choose other things, lesser things. And I think it's possible. I think you have to work at it, though. <laughs> I think you really have to work at it to cut yourself off. Why do that? <laughs> Why not participate in God's love and, and be a part of what God is doing in the world? And what you will discover is that when you live your life in in accord with God's ways, uh, when you live your life in accord with, with the ways of Christ to love our neighbor and, and to love God and to, uh, to seek the good of our community and all these things, if you live with the grain of God's love, you're going to find life more joyful, more fulfilling, more satisfying. You're going to know the very joy and love of Jesus himself. Don't you want that? Yeah. Thank you. This is, let's, let's, have some, uh, let's have some feedback here. It, we can shout it. Uh, it's good news. It's wonderful news. And I'm so thankful that I am not a self-made person. That I didn't plant myself in the ground. But God has let me be a part of this organic body. And sometimes we make mistakes as an organic body. Sometimes we do. But it's up to God to do the pruning and the fixing of things. It's up to God to do the work that cleans up and makes us healthier. And uh, we can do our part, but it doesn't depend on me. And I'm glad for that. I'm glad.